राम जय राम जय जय राम वो राम जय राम जय राम वो राम जय Yesterday we were prompted to dwell more and more intensely on Nirmamattva. Because when we read in quest of God, yesterday we saw in the second chapter, but today when again we were reading, why should we go to the second chapter? We can we can find the same message in the last portion of this first chapter itself. Papa says, it was at this time that slowly it dawned upon his mind that Ram was the only reality and all else was false. While desires for the enjoyment of worldly things were fast falling off, the consideration of me and mine was also wearing out. It is the process of bearing out. That is why in the next chapter he prayed he should be totally removed. That means he is convinced, he is free, but again no old habits, old thoughts keep troubling him. That is why he is bearing out, you know, slowly. Through reflection, that is a beautiful word, bearing out. Bear it there, you know. So constantly thinking about it. He said the me and mine was also wearing out. The sense of possession and relationship was vanishing. All thought, all mind, all heart, all soul was concentrated on Ram. Ram covering up, absorbing everything. And Ram is the mysterious force. Mysterious reality. Mysterious power that pervades and sustains the whole universe. So then we also found uh, the me and mine should go together, Ragankar and uh, 
नर्मतम शुभोत बदल बड़े इसमें सब सेपरेट नर्मतव इज मी एंड माइंड नरहंकार मीन्स ईगो नो एब्सेंस ऑफ ईगो तो टुडे वी विल ट्राई टू कंप्लीट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पोर्शन ऑफ बोथ सो दैट बिफोर वी गेट इन टू दिकडोट्स वी विल हैव ए मोर क्लियर पिक्चर नर्मो मीन्स देर इज नो फीलिंग ऑफ माइंड the sense of doership the sense of enjoyership the sense of non possession i may be possessing but i am not possessive of it it is not possessing us all these can come under this category to do everything without craving for name fame publicity is something which is a must for anyone because when there is no otherness how does the sense of doership arise everything is his intellectually we are thoroughly convinced about it none of the things have been brought by us when we came to this world everything has been gifted by that mysterious power both inside and outside you know when we look the entire machinery called the body mind internet complex it is being run by that power well coordinated through different departments there is no clash between any department there only when super boss presides over everything becomes active when the super boss quits everything is dead and gone when we go and try to find out the nirahankar this will become more and more clear about it so what is there for us to claim everything is his everything is facilitated by him everything is provided by him when these realities are realized one comes under this nirahankar and nirmamatva in gita sandesh baba brought it out how this delusion enfeebled us or enfeebled us so our attempt now is to a, a prayer for empowering us to somehow get rid of this we are a we are a prisoner of our own concepts we are a prisoner of our own nobody has tied down so we have to remove but we don't know how to remove so the only way is to pray all prayers are relevant but the easy one is this good uh, die glory now the prayer die glory if rendered with the right perspective right mindset it will slowly eradicate the dominance of the me and mine every now and then it should well up in our heart not during the prayer time any prayer that gives a push towards this now which is suggested by glory it, it may be some it could be some other prayer also oh lord i have nothing to ask for you i am blessed with all that one can hope for one can ask for i have a mind to think it is 
not thy glory. I have eyes to see, ears to hear. It is all thy glory. All sense organs, you know, we have only picked up two. I have in front of me a world so vast, so variegated, enough for me to express myself. Again it is thy glory. I can make, I can unmake, you know, there is a relative freedom for me. All these possibilities are again thy glory. Again, I can make and make all these possibilities are again thy glory. I can even make this prayer to you. This capacity to appreciate you is again thy glory. Because through life, through activating the vocal department, through activating the mind, through activating the sense organs, you are now making us to repeat this prayer. I seek from thee nothing, for you have given me everything, inside me, outside me. Your presence is something that I can't miss, I don't want to miss. Let thy grace be upon me, not to gain anything new, but to make me see thy glory. In all my achievements, in all my capacities, let me see thy glory. Because these are the two things which will again be instrumental in forgetting. Some achievement is made immediately, you know. Somebody will come and say, you have done something, congrats. Somebody says about our capabilities. Immediately I own it, unknowingly I own it. So I pray to him, at such moment when you touch me, even then I should know it is all bright thy glory. O oh Lord, I have nothing to ask of you. I am blessed with all that one can hope for, ask for. I have a mind to think. It is thy glory. I have eyes to see, ears to hear. In a dead body, eyes and ears are there, but they don't enough. Simple thing. But now I can see, I can hear. Because that mysterious power is there in me. Whom I now address as thou. Whose grace or glory enables my entire department, you know, in the BMI, the body mind internet complex. It starts functioning, just like you know, when you open the office and the boss comes in, the entire department becomes alive. Starting with our signing the admin's register, everything, you know, tuck, 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 tuck. During 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, we close. Fully. Similarly, here, there is no closing because we cannot come back again the next day. So here, the, 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 once we like sign the attendance register, it goes on until he quits the scene. Just start thinking, you know. Otherwise, you know, this Nirankar and uh, uh, Nirmamatva, it will not be very clear to us. We all remember our, uh, what is his name, doctor? Pujanga Shetty says, you know, in the power of love, it is nature's most wonderful work of art. Our heart beats about one lakh times a day and about thirty-five million times a year. It pumps six liters of blood through one lakh twenty thousand kilometers of blood vessels in a day. In one second, we are producing 
1.2 millions of red blood cells to replace an equal number that die. Three things we suppose we start reflecting on. One lakh times a day the breathing is going on. Are we conscious? Are we doing anything? What is our role in that? Suddenly we go and say that machine is borrowed. The next one, to make it more clear, six liters of blood is traveling through 1,20,000 kilometers a day in our body to reach out every nook and corner of the body. Do we do anything like that? Do we give any instruction? Do we guide them? One point we are producing 1.2 million of red blood cells to replace an equal number that die. Our digestive and metabolic system have the remarkable ability to transform the food we eat into blood, bone, body structure. Do we know anything about this? Two times or three times we religiously take the food. We thought, you know, we are appeasing our hunger. When he, give, he makes us to feel the hunger or thirst, we take food or uh, water. Our job is only, you feel, if at all we are doing it, probably we are giving the food. Okay. We are eating the food. Apparently there is any, an action is initiated. But again, when the food is, food is taken, suppose a dead body does not take the food. Dead body does not feel the hunger, the thirst. So even for the for feeling the hunger and the thirst, we now know that the mysterious power is needed. And then whatever food we eat, it doesn't come out in the same way, you know. There is a process going on, that much we know. So many departments are there inside. which is doing the factory, you know, different department, different gadgets or instruments. And one, a particular uh, uh, raw material is passed through one lathe or one equipment. It does its job and then passes it on to the next one. They do it. Finally, the end product comes, you know. Similarly, here also the food we eat, it gets transformed into blood, the bone and the body. Do we know anything about it? The air which we breathe but cannot see contains oxygen which is exchanged for the excess of carbon dioxide inside and then thrown out without us even knowing about it. When to the school, we know that we are all living on oxygen, that's all. And later on, the science brought out that we are purging out the carbon dioxide. If the oxygen is not going inside, finished. Do we do anything for that? Every time we get a cut or a wound, Within seconds, there is a tremendous amount of activity in and around the wound to seal and heal it. When you go to the clinic and when they take the blood test, you know, they give you a pinch. Immediately what they do? They press. In the shortest possible time, the oozing out of the blood is stopped. How? Even if you have a cut, one or two days, 
satu itu. So similarly, there are a number of activities that we we go closer to it. How does an object? You visualize with an object. How does the sound get identified as a particular sound? So we keep on reflecting upon each and every uh, activity of the sensorians. We will be wondering at ourselves, how, how is it that we are going on? So when we, all that have been brought out in two here, I have eyes to see, ears to hear. So many things are. All these are thy goals. I have in front of me a world so vast and so variegated. Nowadays, definitely people who are living in metro, they will be feeling this now actually, you know. When due to the lockdown, when they are in their houses or flats, cannot come out. Now only we know how vast the world is, otherwise we were not recognizing it. And how we were enjoying the variegated show. We people who are living in a village area, we are blessed with that privilege. We can see the greenery every day. Different types of trees, different types of flowers, different types of fruits. So variegated. So that we don't feel boredom, drudgery, you know. Same thing to look at, no? Varieties, because we want varieties. Again, it is like going. I feel as an individual I can make and make, but now I know it is all your glory. I can make and make, all these possibilities are again like glory. Because if the mysterious power is not presiding over the so-called me and my equipment, I will not be able to do that. I can even make this prayer to you. A great discount for us. In spite of providing everything, you know, you still give us an, an opportunity to pray for you. This capacity to appreciate you, to know you, you know, is again like you. Papa was blunt in telling that. By sadhana, you come to know that by sadhana you cannot achieve anything. Because he is beyond sadhana. He doesn't put any condition that you should do sadhana. Even before doing sadhana, even after doing sadhana, he, you, he is still there. I seek from thee, all these things when I keep on reflecting, suddenly I find, I seek from thee nothing. For, that is because you have given me everything. You gave me a sense of individuality, you gave me a wonderful body, mind and electric equipment, you gave me a wonderful system which you, you, are, you are controlling. By your remote control you make the entire the me and mine alive, active. And you, when you make me to open my eyes and see the whole world, with all its varieties, everything. Normally we say, you know, as individual we can say we are provided with everything through mother nature and society. So you have given me everything. Inside me, outside me, your presence is something that I can't miss. 
I don't want to. Though I am not always aware, I now feel, I can't miss. Because but for you, I am here. Bereft of you, I am not there. Let thy grace be upon me, not to gain anything new, but to make me see thy glory. In all my achievements, in all my capacities, let me see thy glory. Good Lord, I have nothing to ask. Self-created and a very strong wall of separation shuts the individual from the view and the experience of the immortal realm, and this wall is the individual sense or ego. A self-created and very strong wall of separation shuts the individual from the view and experience of the immortal realm. And this void is the individual sense of our ego. The eradication of the ego sense only befits the individual achievement, befits the individual for achievement of the loftiest perfection of the transcendent truth. As the dam obstructs the free flow of the stream, as a clog within the fluid permits not the outpouring of melodious notes, as an ill-tuned stringed instrument cannot produce charming music, as the dimmed glass does not lend itself to the reflection of light through it, so the ego, with which an individual is obsessed, is the one hindrance to the spontaneous revealment of the inwelling divine power and glory.
as the dam obstructs the free flow of water. As a clog within the fruit permits not the outpouring of melodious notes. As an ill-tuned stringed instrument cannot produce charming music. As the dimmed glass does not lend itself to the reflection of the light through it. So the ego, with which an individual is obsessed, is the one hindrance to the spontaneous revealment of the indwelling divine power and joy. Remove the dam. You allow the waters of the stream with all its pristine purity to flow in a sparkling current. Empty the flute of its clogged matter. You play upon it to produce a celestial melody. Tune the instrument and you draw from it most entrancing music. Clean the glass and you permit the light to pass through it with a glorious brilliance. Similarly, eliminate the ego sense from your life and that instant you liberate life too, realize to oneness of the immortal truth, its oneness with the entire universe, its oneness with the infinite power, its oneness with the infinite everlasting joy. That's a powerful presentation of Enough food for us to reflect. How the water is prevented through the dam, how the music is prevented through the clogged matter, how the melody is obstructed by the ill-tuned equipment, how the vision is made unclear by the dust on the grass. Similarly, the reality within us is imprisoned, so to say. First line, a self-created and very strong wall of separation shuts the individual from the view and experience of the immortal realm. And this wall is the individual sense or ego. When we try to bring in the God dimension behind, as many thoughts, words, deeds, situations, our ego will become a gentle ego, or a ripe ego, or a servant ego, or a devotee's ego. Because so long as we have got a, a what is this called? Embodied self. It may not be possible to get rid of it hundred percent. So that is why Rambi, Swami Rangaradhanji was quoting freely about uh, how uh, Param, Rambisha Paramahamsa used to say this. Gentle ego, ripe ego, devotee's ego, servant's ego. Me and mine is not there, but the sense of individuality continues. The raw ego remains no more. So we, 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 at the moment we have got a raw ego. So it is to be processed. Spiritual discipline or spiritual journey is a process by which this raw one becomes a purified one. The raw one is not useful to everybody. Purified one is useful to everybody. Take anything that the nature gives. We all eat jackfruit, mango, pudding. It is there in the tree. But when we take the jackfruit from the tree, remove the outer coverings, bring out, peel out the inner, this thing, what do you call it? That? Fruit and make it clean and then, you know, it is shared by everybody. From the raw to the refined one. Any raw material, when it is made to pass through a process of 
various operations, it becomes the finished product. And the finished product is easily used by everybody. So similarly, we have got a raw, according to Bhagavan Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, we have got a raw ego. So this raw ego has to be processed. To make it gentle ego, ripe ego, devotees ego, servants ego. I would add one more child. Now one more exercise. We have seen the mysterious power from a different angle so far. Now Swami Ranganathanji, during his commentary on Vivek Chudamani, he wants every one of us to go, look with him. This also should go on simultaneously. And then we are now searching for this I. In each one of us, Swamiji says, there is an individual self and an eternal self. The individual self is the I and the eternal self is the witness of this I. When we use the word I, our finger points towards our body. Actually, it implies a profound reality hidden inside our psychophysical system, the mysterious power. In the absolute sense, it refers to the reality that witnesses the I. We just close now. You are hearing these words. You know that you are hearing these words. You are not hearing. You are not the hearing. You are hearing. You are not the hearing. Because you, are, you, you know that you are hearing. The knowing principle in you, the knowing principle in us, which knows I am seeing, I am hearing, I am touching, I am smelling, I am tasting. You know? I, am not ta- I am not the tasting. I am not the seeing, I am not the smelling. This is a a subjective introspection. This method is employed in good old days to first see, you know, separate the the, 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 the real eye, the mysterious power and the sense of individuality. That is the eternal self, witness is called. But in our deluded state, I is understood as the individual self. So this profound I has profound meaning. It's an important atom needing serious investigations. In this body there is an individual self as well as the eternal self. They are the appearing self and the real self respectively. There is the I and there is one who witnesses the I. The eye is in mundane affairs, small eye. Eating sweet and bitter fruits, every time it receives a severe blow, it looks up at the one who is witnessing in silent majesty, moves up a little, aspiring to become like that. In this way, it goes on moving until one day it realizes that it is one with the witnessing self. That means, you know, this Papa said in, when you are explaining about the inward journey, he said we should, uh, first of all, we should know that the God whom we are praying is with him. Okay. Second thing we take to chanting of God's name mentally. And uh, to arrest all dissimilar thoughts, and you have a glimpse of the stillness of silence. It may not become easily still. So with self-surrender and prayer we intensify. And when it has done its job, 
witness consciousness will suffer. And that witness consciousness is the awareness. Papa clearly says it's a state of God realization. The witness in me, the mysterious power is in me in the form of consciousness, in the form of knowing principle, in the form of awareness absolute. The rest of the things are the small eye. The super boss is the self, spirit, consciousness. So in Vivek Chudamani he says this. So every time the small small eye, the sense of individuality, forgetting about the presence of the super boss, at times name certain experiences as bitter, certain experiences as pleasant, gain or loss, pleasant or unpleasant, elevating or disturbing, then no intensity. There is a beautiful article called Papa and called use of suffering. He said all these things are given to us only to look up to the self. Then only we know, otherwise we may not. If the, if, if the sense gratification is going on, why will we think about something about higher? So that is why it is written, this is taken from an Upanishad also, I is in mundane affairs eating sweet and bitter fruits. Every time it receives a blow, severe blow, it looks up at the one who is witnessing in silent majesty. And then we start. First the nearness, then the samipya, sanitya, vyapanam, and then become ekato. First nearness, then comes presence. presence, then comes the vision of him everywhere, all pervading, that is called Vyabha. And then what become one with everybody. This small cell is will slowly try to do this. Adya, super boss is sitting there, and then finally become one with him. Every chamber he opens, and then he enters. The little life was only a reflection of the witnessing self. Our waking self is confined to the waking state. Again, no, he gives us some more food for thought, for reflection. It is no place in dream and sleep. The dream self is confined to dream, having no reference to waking and sleep. Both waking and dream sleep disappear in sleep. Yet, there is one entity witnessing all the three selves and registering in their deeds, it is that which says, I dreamt, I woke up, I slept. That I is not the waking, the dreaming, the sleeping I, that is the eternal witness of these changing eyes. Technically it is called the fourth in relation to the changing sense, to the ear. That is our true state. This is the depth study of our experience as revealed in the three states. So through thy glory, through reflection on our own mechanism inside, you know, how does it go? Through the variegated show that is placed before us, through a reflection on the me, the small I think. These are some of the ways by which we become totally aware that with him we are, without him we are not. But for him, we are. We are left of him, we are not. So these are, this is the fundamental thing we have to learn in spiritual journey. Papa was blessed because he had 
he was prompted to go through yoga was system during that period you know 1920 to 22 along with teachings of swami vivekananda and swami ramdev the yoga was system laid the foundation of all this that is why we can call him as a jnani bhakta everywhere he brings out this in a form which is not very rough which is not very crude which is not dry everywhere no the bhakti will be there and his bhakti as we elaborately discussed elsewhere it is not confined to one particular deity one particular type of worship one type of one particular place one particular location but his bhakti is for everyone every creation is a form to be worshiped that means the i is not there that's why we find papa never goes i excepting during those ecstatic moments where you know we when we try to take it out 20 or 25 are there musings there only he jumps with the i knowing fully well that the small i is in reflection of the big i so these are all some of the things which we have to keep on hammering into ourselves with this background we go through the in order that these are all philosophies theories how does it get applied in the practical life is it possible then the anecdotes when ashram was you know you are now Ashram is involved in various activities. Many years back, when when we got a petition or for a, seeking for some financial aid for his house construction, somebody was sent to ascertain the actuality. After stopping at a place, he had to walk. Through a small lane, lane. He had been walking. Suddenly, he saw a thatched shed. An old lady was sitting on the front yard. So this man asked, "Where is this place, person staying?" "Ah, yeah. You go here. Give correct instructions." And she added one more. the most deserving part so he went there the man is also somewhat disabled pathetic condition so he assured them some assistance would be given and on his return he saw the old lady again and the old lady he casually asked him when you knew that uh, we are from such and such a place and you have come for this particular purpose you did not say that you also need assistance for your house because it's a thatched shed small house not even one chair or something there with all joy you know he is person who came only when there to me i explained this she said no no i am perfectly okay satisfied here they are very deserving And she started listing out the reason for their asking <coughs> and the re- uh, reason why these people are content. Me and mine was totally absent, even at that particular time. It was many, many years ago, ten to twelve years or thirteen years ago. But still, when this was conveyed to us, you know, wow. God is teaching us, you know, why should why should we go to that particular place? He wants us to share it today to all of you, because me and mine is not a dry philosophy. I am presenting it through so many people, so many of my creation. 
contentment is there. When the me and mine is not there, contentment is there. Simplicity is there. Sharing our information, right information. Then care and concern for others. Ah. So many things that old lady, you know. And if you remember right, when you were telling the, the body language was such that she was fully content, every word of her. She said, only my son is here. Small family, this is more than that. More attention was given on that. So me and mine, me and mine, so many, so many, yesterday we covered some. tomorrow again. In Vainard, you know. Tribes are more. We are talking about 30, 40 years back. Government had introduced so many systems for their bringing them to the mainstream of life. But they all follow their own rules. They don't go to the school in spite of even if the government uh, puts a building for them, they won't do it. So many things happen. So when they fall sick, they don't use this any medicine. They have got some herbs or something. One group of people decided to form a medical mission with absolutely zero capital. It was named as Vivekananda Medical Mission. that group was able to collect sample medicines from different cities, from different doctors, and they used to send. And doctor is necessary, na? So they go to the Calicut Medical College. Whenever the, the, bad, the result is out, after the uh, house urgency, there will be a period when the doctors will be waiting for placement. So they will plead, why don't you please come? No salary. So, people in and around why not, they will ready to come forward, so they used to manage. But a stage came when there was no doctor. And these, uh, some, not only that, in the field they have to go to the tribe colony, motivate them to go and get the medicine, OP only. Just imagine. We were all closely associating that movement when we were in why not. The Jain was very much interested in all such activities. So finally, the organizers thought this will not move. If it has to become a reality, there should be a permanent doctor. Doctor is very important. Somehow they went to Nagpur, met Devara Siddhiya, explained everything to them. Then a middle income, a, a, a boy from a middle income family, middle income family, they must have struggled to get a seat in MBBS for MBBS. And that boy had just finished his MBBS and uh, house urgency. Immediately, they were she called him, can you go and work in a village area where you don't know the, nothing will be given to you. No salary, no facility. And the language also must be foreign to you. Are you prepared? He said, if you say so, I will do that. And this, boy, must be hardly 23, 24 at that time. He came to Vainar and joined this institution. We had the privilege of seeing him. He has to cook. Just imagine with a stove, some gruel, some upma, some roti, something. And he will lie down. Then somebody will call. The water, with the water medicine he used to give. Like that, you know, you are going. Slowly, you know, another person also immediately after his retirement joined from Trivandrum. Both of them started working, one for mobilizing it. Then people started knowing the noble man. No salary. 
Just like any other, they will also provide rice, uh, food, uh, uh, food articles and vegetables. And yes, to cook, no, cook also. And then, now, it has become a wonderful organization. <laughs> because later on, all those things started paying a rich dividend in the form of recognition by the government and the locals. And it's a full-fledged hospital now, full-fledged hospital. Even now, he is there. So when his marriage was fixed, at least somebody should cook and give him So Jane said, he is doing so much, at least we people in Vainad, we should represent. So both of us went to Nagpur to attend his marriage. Then only we came to know about his background. Simple family, middle income family. And even after marriage, he was not given salary. All that the institution did was to take a house on rent and provide. Just imagine. Even now, it must be the system. He is, what, he is also considered as a part of the society, the institution, that's all. Swami Vivekananda Medical Mission. Now, you just imagine about the me and mine in him. No thought about the future, you know. 10% dedication and zero expectation. 10% dedication. Joyous. When he completed his 25 years of this noble service, people wanted to you know, do usual vivahara. He said nothing to it. And finally, when we asked him what is that you need, then he said, you can give us one ECG machine or something like that. That is he for the 20 years. So that also was supplied. So because he, he lives before us, Nirmamu and Nirahankar, no? Absence of me and mine. They are all the models, you know, icons. When we hear so many things from the philosophy, God is giving us both. He is the philosophy for us and for enabling us to uh, uh, internal, inter, internalize it. And then to ensure that it doesn't remain at the intellectual level only, He provides before us solid examples. And uh, not only Mahatmas, Mahatmas are there, but ordinary people, you know. We call them as ordinary. Swami, they are Mahatmas. They are extraordinary people. Normally, we have a notion about this Mahatma. No? They are not individuals, they are institutions. So, there are so many, so many. We are all privileged, blessed. We find one in million such cases. There are many. No, no. Many, many, many. We can quote, you know, many, many, many. It is not like that. It is not like that. Our uh, God has give, gave us wonderful opportunities to interact with uh, so many people where we found. Many are like this. Only few are not like this. But it needs some opening, that's all. In everybody, God is there, but the opening takes time for some reason. And uh, as a devotee, plowing through this field, God will make us to get in touch with such people. Otherwise, He will not. He will keep mom. He will not. But when we show our inclination toward this, is it possible? Can you show me some icon? Immediately he will make you identify. So tomorrow, rest of the uh, anecdotes we will go through. Very important, me and mine. We, before we close, we will again uh, read Papa's uh, this word. Because that is the uh, food for thought. Which can be possible only by giving up everything he called mine. 
Men are deluded when they declare, I do this, I do that, this is mine, that is mine. All over arm is thine. All things are done by thee alone. Thy slaves one prayer to thee is to take him under thy complete guidance and remove his eyes. So, Ramnam chanting is exclusively for that, he should know that. That is why at the time of opening he said, Ideal of the ashram is universal love and service based upon the vision of divinity in everybody. If at the moment the vision of divinity comes, me and I is not there, then only the universality will come, the universal vision, the universal truth, which will be translated into universal love and service. So today, though we have been associating, Papa wants it to make it very clear. And with that, we will try to lead the rest of our life. With that, we will try to make our Ramnam more and more effective. Every time when we uh, chant Ramnam, this should now come back to us. Remove me, remove the me and mine from me. Remove the me and mine from me. Hari Om. Om Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram Om.
build up in our mind to us. But unless we try to understand Papa as a Jnani Bhatta, it will be difficult. He has combined beautifully, harmoniously, both jnana and bhakti. At the same time, ensuring that there is no dryness in the jnana path and there is no emotionalism on the bhakti path. Both he has been able to balance it. May you issue or the vision which has just come back from the printers. It is under the process of uh, <laughs> making it ready to be handed over to the head office, the post office. We hope in a couple of days' time it might become possible for us to hand over to the post office. Because the last month's vision was we could post only 10 days back. Anyhow, before you do so, it may take time for you to reach. Here, in this May June, the first lead article of Papa is the light of lights. When we say the Jnani Patta, how he has beautifully brought out this blending. When the heart becomes pure and is awakened to the consciousness of the Divine, the entire human behavior reflects its light in all its constituents. When the heart becomes pure and is awakened to the consciousness of the Divine, There itself we find the blending. Heart becomes pure being where there is no me and I and me, me and mine, and only God is there. So bhakti. To the consciousness and is awakened to the consciousness of the divine. Consciousness of the divine. Awareness of the What the jnana path finally takes us to. The entire human vehicle reflects his light in all the constituents. The body, mind and senses then are permeated with this light. The person so blessed becomes truly a luminous expression of God. The spiritual radiance that goes out from him or her is cool like the rays of the moon and it elevates and heals the mentally diseased souls who come in contact with it. God reveals himself in all his splendor in the heart of such a great one. How does a person attain to this transcendent light and joy? The one and the only way is self-surrender. Born of complete absence of egoism. By this alone, the divine power and glory are made manifest in a human being. That is why he is now making us to concentrate upon the Nirmamu and Niraga. That's the biggest roadblock. By this alone, that is, by self-surrender, born of the complete absence of egoism. Even these words are coming because he willed it. Even these words are heard because he willed it. Everything happens only by His will. We have understood it intellectually. We have absolutely 
no disputation on it. But it should become a come down. It should be brought down to the experiential level, that's all. By this alone, the divine power and glory are made manifest in a human being. The heart is really a temple of God. When one recognizes this and is aware of it. A person reveals his or her inner power and glory when the intellect is now try to concentrate how he is bringing head, heart and the body. Body, mind, intellect. A person reveals his or her inner power and glory when the intellect is illumined with the light of God the heart responds to the eternal symphony of love and the physical body pours out spontaneously energy translating itself into divine action. The person is now no longer egoistic in his or her outlook and activity but is a vibrant instrument of the divine living and moving for the uplift and welfare of the world. The influence such a person casts over humanity and all creation is wonderful. God is light and joy. God is love and wisdom. God is the supreme power that controls all the world. Such a God dwells in the heart of us all. To realize Him is the supreme purpose and goal of life. All else is of no importance or heavy. God is a reality. He is our intimate friend. It is by constant association with Him that we experience our oneness with Him. We start to reach Him as separate from Him. But ultimately the fusion between us and Him becomes so complete that divinity disappears and we stand revealed as He as He Himself. This way we say, no, the harmonious blend of jnana and bhakti. We start to reach him as separate from him. But ultimately the fusion between us and him becomes so complete that duality disappears and we stand revealed as he himself. But I am that. Confusing diversity that gives place to absolute unity. So long as we feel apart from Him, our life is beset with many an obstruction and we are subject to all kinds of cramping and unhappy vicissitudes. But when life is released from the bondage of its own making, manifesting its inherent spiritual power, light and grace, then it comes to its own and enjoys everlasting peace and bliss. The life becomes a light to itself and to all others. It is self-revealed and the magnificence of it is past thought and expression. May such a light spread all over the world and may humanity be blessed with the vision of it and love and harmony prevail on earth. So this is how Papa say we can say is a jnani matra. Even after scaling the heights, though he was able to maintain that relationship. Because the bhakta, a bhakta means the Lord is there. Well. The Lord and bhakta. But in jnana, he is one with that. So as his spiritual children, we feel, it may be right or wrong, we feel that unless we also try to follow to some action Papa's path, 
it may be difficult for us to understand. Previously, we were satisfied with the physical presence, you know. You will say, Papa did this, Papa did that, Mother did this, this, Mother did this, that. It has not taken us to God. And Papa always keeps on asking us to concentrate upon the impersonal aspect. In his case, it was made possible because during the initial stages, when the inner struggle was going on, he was prompted by God to go through the wonderful text like uh, Yoga Vasishta, where the fundamentals of all jnana path are being exhaustively dealt with. Even the very word void, which all of you know, it comes from the first chapter of uh, Inquest of God. Papa did not use the word Ram or God first. He said he heard the he heard it from the great void. So even that was expressed in that kind of a yoga vasa. But throughout, Papa ensured that it doesn't become dry at all. This has to be kept in our mind. If we keep this in our mind, in a mysterious way, we will be guided and led towards. One more article we will read from that. Mataji also says, you know, light. Mataji's words. The war not merely an individual, but the war the truth which is universal. The dazzling right of truth is thy true being. Thy existence is beyond compare. Thy existence covers, absorbs, includes all. Thou dwellest everywhere, because thou provide, pro, pervadest all things animate and inanimate. So there is a, there is a dialogue between the King Janana and the O oh, revered sage, King Janaka Atras, Yadnivatya, what is the light that illumines a person? The light that awakens and impels him to perform all that he does. Yadnivatya gave a very straightforward answer by saying, The sun is Yugen, O King, for it is the sun alone that is the source of all light, and it is for this light that man sits, moves about, does all his work and returns. That is right, O venerable sage, again says Janaka. But when the sun has set, what is it that helps man as light? Yatnavirkya replied, the moon. It is the moon that is the light of the man and the sun is not there. All right, Janaka replied. I agree, but when the sun is not there, the moon is also not there, then what is, what is it that guides man as his light? Yadimakya replied, when the sun has set and the moon is not there, the fire is our light or lamp or whatever it is. For by that we sit, work, go out, come back. Janaka said, I am all in agreement with you, but when, what then is the light when there is no sun, no moon, no fire? Speech indeed is the light when all these are absent, said Yadavita. Even though we cannot see our hand in the dark, we can hear the voice 
and moved towards the south. Janaka was happy but had still one more question. He asked a revered sage, when sun sets, moon is not there, fire is absent and there is no speech, then what is the light? Vatnavikya replied, the Self, capital S, Spirit, Atman. That indeed is our light, O King, for by that we sit, move, work, go out, come back. Janaka was deeply touched by this, but wanted to know more about the Self that he referred to as the light of all lights. To which the sage replied, The Self is the pure awareness, the knowing principle, consciousness. That shines as the light within the heart, surrounded by the senses. It is this Self that is one with the sole reality, the Brahman. This self, this self is free from desire, free from evil, free from fear. The man who, in union with the self, sees without seeing, smells without smelling, tastes without tasting, speaks without speaking, hears without hearing, knows without knowing, for, because, there is nothing separate from him. This state of not having another is the state of unity, one without a second, and that is the world of Brahma. This is the supreme goal of life, the supreme pressure, the supreme joy. Papa elsewhere clearly says, when you are chanting the name of God, you are thinking that you are chanting the name of one who is far away from you, who is in <coughs> above. But you are chanting the name of your own self, capital S, Atma Ram. You do not know that you are Ram. So you have to ceaselessly chant his name to know that you are Ram. The which is called the light. This background should be there when we go through any spiritual discipline. Absence of otherness can come only when me and mine quit the seat. The last line of Yajna Vidya is you know, when there is no otherness. That is why eat without tasting, hear without listening. There is no object there. Subject object relationship is not there. Only one. So, there is no otherness means, that is the state. So, this should be kept in our mind. We are moving towards that. And that is why he took up Adveshta. Then, 
Maitri, then Karuna, and now Nirma. So we decided that it would be better to combine both, me and mine, me and mine, which is what Papa has said in the inquest of God. In his first book he said that we have to be free ourselves from the me and mine. Because before he took the plunge on 27th December 1922, this was the thought God gave him while he was chanting. Simultaneously this was going on. That is why he will say meditated and chanted. Meditated means not the traditional way of meditating. From these words we can infer by meditation he meant dwelling on these thoughts and chanting. Chanting to keep up the constancy and dwelling on the Almighty Lord of the Universe helps him not the mind to go anywhere else. So he, this is it, O, o Ram, when thy slave finds thee at once so powerful and so loving, and that he who trusts thee can be sure of true peace and happiness, why should he not throw himself entirely on thy mercy, which can only be possible by giving up everything he called mine? The what all in all to thy slave. The what the soul protected in the world. Men are deluded when they declare, I do this, I do that, I, this is mine, that is mine. All O Ram is thine. All things are done by thee alone. Thy slave's one prayer to thee is to take him under thy complete guidance and remove his eyes. So the biggest roadblock in our spiritual journey is the dominance of me and mine. We can try to free us from his clutches only by his grace. So we pray to him with the freedom he has given to us. Even the very act of prayer is also a gift given by him to us. So with the freedom he has given to us, we pray to him and simultaneously try to translate the values or virtues. He has made it as a prerequisite in the twelfth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So, going back to the anecdotes, we covered Pasar. Papa was, the entire possession in Papa's room was taken by us a stranger and when others named him as a thief, Papa said, no, God came in another form and Ramdas gave them to him. So in least zero, zero sense of possession, absence of other he, he has given, he has taken, that's all. Then that uh, Lottery ticket window. How, in spite of the fact that technically the ticket is with him, the person has not paid him the money. The only thing is he has telephoned and he has kept it separately in a cover meant for him. So, in his mind, it has been kept for him only. It is no longer his. The first job for a householder, no? to keep it up, especially he is not even, I don't think he is even belonging to the middle class income group. Every day he comes from a place called Payano and opens the shop at uh, Kanyangar, a simple man, but in still one crore of rupees. Technically, the other person has not paid money. The ticket is still with him, 
nothing and nobody in the world would have pro protested if he had supplied, if he had presented it as himself. But still, he did not do it because the sense of possession was not there. Then Subramanyam. Subramanyam is working as a personal driver of Mr. Samshiva Reddy, correspondent company for of Nirmal Rudai School, Kamam, Andhra Pradesh. A simple man, father of three children, has been with the employer for the past seven years. Samshiva Reddy told me an act of honesty of Mr. Subramanyam. Subramanyam was returning on a Monday morning with his native place by bus. While getting down, he picked up the bag from the bus luggage bus luggage rack and reached home. Though he heard a mobile phone ringing twice, he did not bother as he did not own one. He thought that the ring was coming from someone's phone on the road. But when the phone rang again after he reached home, he was surprised to find the phone ringing from the bag he carried home. When he opened the bag, he was surprised to find the phone and also cash of rupees 55,000. He was shocked, perplexed. The bag was not his. He had brought the bag which was identical to his. In the meanwhile, the mobile phone rang again and the call was from the owner of the bag with phone and money. Subramanyam explained to the caller that the oversight he had brought home his bag as his was also identical. The caller was a lady who was carrying the money to make the final payment towards purchase of a house. Mr. Subramanyam, after getting the complete identification, returned the bag to the owner, who wanted to give a reward of cash, which Subramanyam refused. Sambashwam Reddy, in appreciation of his diver's honesty, gave him an increment of rupees 500 per month. An ordinary man, three children, an ordinary tribe. Now, otherwise, we may say, you know, these things can happen only in a Mahatma's mind. God is there in everybody's heart, so he will open up. If he has not opened up, the me and mine is strong. In his case, the me and mine is not that strong. Neither for name, not for name. This is another incident. Normally, you know, the craving will be there for politicians to run after name, fame, publicity and that. Nirmamattva. Here is a case. When a civil engineer who was serving in Gruff, Gruff means General Reserve Engineers Force, it is directly coming under the central government and their job is to put up roads and build uh, bridges in the border areas. It is not coming directly under the defense department. So a civil engineer who was serving in that was denied promotion because of the non-recognition of his diploma received from the Kerala Government Polytechnic at Calicut. In Calicut there is a Kerala Government Polytechnic. He was a diploma holder in civil engineering. He had joined them. So he wrote to a few members, he wrote to us and a few letters were sent to all the MPs, Lok Sabha as well as Rajya Sabha. The Lok Sabha MPs were not to just acknowledged as you should have. It has been passed on to the But one Rajya Sabha MP by name C. Achutamen, who later became the Chief Minister of Kerala, he was, an, he was a Rajya Sabha MP. As soon as he got the letter, he wrote a postcard saying that he has received the letter. When he goes to Delhi, he will find, he will find out under which department this graph comes. Next time, you know, after 15 days, another postcard came. All he knows of his own handwriting that it comes under 
the shipping and transport ministry strangely and so when he took up the matter they said yes it is a mistake but we can't do anything unless the government notifies if the government has to notify the state government has to take it up so achita men wrote in the postcard in his own handwriting when i go to trivandrum next i will personally meet the education minister and do the needful after 15 days again we got a cover this time not a postcard stating that he talked to the chief minister they moved a resolution in the kerala state assembly and a copy of the proceedings of the assembly were requesting the government to set right this anomaly and achita men again writes when i go to delhi next i will follow it next after 15 days a postcard comes he met the uh, the department chief handed it over conveyed it they agreed they decided to set right and after 15 days the letter came from the engineer that is promotion was the vithya promotion was sanction accepting the person of the family who took it up and he took it up always you know you took it up as a true representative of the people he was not after name fame publicity because if he was anything like that he would have definitely put it up in the paper he would give a press conference you know so nirma matam mili in all levels this is possible in all levels there are revelations through his instruments another person after reading a book that made him reflect on the abandoned bodies in the hospitals and old age homes in chennai associate <coughs> vice president of india infela which is a big company she see them started his silent seva of collecting unclaimed bodies without knowing the name religion or caste of the deceased he gives them a dignified burial with a universal prayer on his lips he has been doing this for the past 24 years somebody was able to know because when he contacted one of the uh, hospitals or old age home they made a note and they revealed this always we would not have known at all he introduced himself and he said he will take up the responsibility nirma mantra sent person dedication and zero expectation i think we shared this about the vegananda medical mission to that doctor he is still there few decades back a doctor in kasaragod started planting saplings after his clinical hours though he did not get any encouragement or appreciation he continued his mission now almost all trees on both sides of the railway track between bekel and kasaragod are planted by him he has not issued any press statement he has not taken a photo and asked the people to publish it nirma matto two days after the lockdown came in effect ernakulam district assistant police commissioner was patrolling in the city he saw a man without mask walking with crutches when approached he asked for some water to drink the police officer gave him water realizing that he was hungry the officer opened his lunch box and offered him his homemade food 
Seeing this, some more people came towards him for food. Later, back in his office, he wondered how people who were relying on hotel food could, could survive in this complete lockdown. He started requesting people in his contacts to come forward and offer food for those who were struggling to find food. The response was instant inspiring. In two months, around 70,000 food packets were collected and distributed by police. One woman in Bangalore in India has started the Care Monger India, a group to provide support to those who are unable to care for themselves in times of COVID-19 breakout. These caregivers are young volunteers, mostly people who are seeking help are either old or have special needs. Mahita Nagaraj, who is digital marketing professional from Shantinagar, Bangalore, goes out to organize, seek volunteers to get medicines and other essentials for senior citizens. In 48 hours of setting up their Facebook group, their numbers went from zero to 2,000. And within 24 hours of setting up their phone helpline, they have got 400 calls. Why are we reading all these things? We need not think God is there in everybody. And Nirmamattam He gives to everybody. Very few people come to the limelight. Majority of them, 99% of them, they don't come to the limelight. Only thing is somebody has to kindle this. God chooses, Papa used to say, chosen instruments of God. Through chosen instruments of God, God kindles. And then you know all these things come out by itself. Afterwards they may forget, they may not bring in the God dimension. God for his own reasons would have kept. But at the same time, he gives him a taste. Otherwise, why should there should be a spontaneous a response, positive response for every uh, every such initiative. Mind can be for we to be free from to be free of attachment is the sign of a true monk. A short Zen, Zen story illustrates the truth. Just Zen, the Zen monk was an artist. He demanded a huge amount as a fee from his clients even before he commenced his work. In due course, he came to be known as the stingy artist. Somebody once approached him for a painting to be done. He inquired, how much will you pay me? Whatever you demand, but you should paint in my presence, said the girl. He agreed and one day, he was summoned by the girl to paint during the feast that she was holding for her patron. He completed the work and he was paid an exorbitant amount that he charged. The girl then turned to her patron and said, the picture of the artist may be fine, however his mind is dirty with greed for money. Hence his painting is only fit to be for one of my petticoats. It is not fit for an exhibition. Saying this, saying so she gave her petticoat and asked the son to pay another on the back of it. How much will you pay me? asked the saint. Whatever you ask, said the girl. He as usual asked for a fancy amount and did the painting as per her request and left. Later it was revealed that this mom stocked grapes, grapes in his warehouse unknown to anyone in order to battle the sudden outbursts of famine. Secondly, he wanted to repair the road to the national shrine which had worn out, making it difficult for people to traverse. Thirdly, he wanted to build a temple which was the wish of his father, teacher who died without realizing it. These were the reason for the monk to charge heavily for his artworks. Once when all the three objectives were met, he abandoned his brush and his painting materials, retired to the mountains, never to paint again. 
Apparently, we saw him greedy, apparently stingy. No? So, don't rush up with any judgment. He has, he has got Nirma Matwa. Even while he was charging an exorbitant amount, it was not for him. He was taking from the haves, passing it on to the have-nots, that's all. Not me, but he, the last one. When a petitioner who hails from BPO category requested for some financial aid for his house construction, somebody from Ash, I think we have shared it yesterday, you know, the lady, old lady, Unni went and... Just imagine that old lady sitting on a thatcher shed, a small thatcher shed, where he went and asked for the, to verify, to identify the petitioner. She correctly guided him and said he is the most deserving, kindly try to do something. And when he inquired, the, after that inquiry, it was very clear that whatever that is mentioned in the petition, it is 100% true. And uh, while returning, he asked the lady, you are also sitting in a thatcher shed, but you have not asked for any financial assistance when you know that uh, Ashram has come forward to do that. She immediately said, he, she is very, they are very much satisfied with this, contented with this, this is more than enough for when we were remembering about Nirma Matwa, no? Papa is parading before us empty number of such incidents so that we will not say, oh, it is not possible, for us it is not possible. No. Theoretically, we are convinced. Now, at the practical level to come down, he is parading before us empty number of examples, anecdotes drawn from the daily life. And Nirahanka. Yesterday we were also reading out in order that we have some picture of uh, the Nirahanka. We should know the... We should have some basic idea about the ego, about the me the self in us, the small self in us. So we were reading the commentary on Vivek Chudamani where there are two selves in us, the lower self and the higher self. The higher self, the lower self is the, at the moment we can say that is the sense of individuality. That is why when we say who are you, I am so and so. We are pointing out to ourselves. But actually, we are pointing out to the core of our being. He has put it in a simple word. There is an I. There is the I. There is the one who witnesses the I. When we close our eyes, when we hear these words, when the witness consciousness develops, the knowing principle is Welling up, it will be very clear. Who knows, just now we have read out about the light, you know. We are now sharing these thoughts. You are all now hearing these words. We know that we are sharing. You know that you are hearing. That knowing principle. All those things have been ex exhaustively dealt with. Then we move to that beautiful prayer, Thy glory. Again we will read, O Lord, I have nothing to ask of you. I am blessed with all that one can hope for, ask for. I have a mind to think, it is Thy glory. I, am, I have eyes to see, ears to hear, all these are thy glory. 
what is it that makes my mind to think what is it that makes my eyes to see what is it that makes my ear to hear no this is suddenly see the dead body before us it does not think it does not see it does not hear none of its sense organs perform but how in our case it performs what is that makes i have in front of me a world so vast so variegated enough for me to express myself again it is like to be i can make i can unmake all these possibilities are again like to be i can even make this prayer to you this capacity to appreciate you is again thy glory i seek from thee nothing for you are given me everything inside me outside me your presence is something that i can't miss i don't want to miss let thy grace be upon me not to gain anything new but to make me see thy glory in all my achievements in all my capacities let me see thy glory we we should not be at the surface level then we will not be able to go along with the deep we will try to go through a few anecdotes there are plenty in papa's case in jarsi a school master came for a discussion he belonged to the arya samaj started by the great saint swami dayan sarsi this friend in the course of talk became very hot and excited the point was about the shuddhi movement set on foot by swami shradhananda ji ramdas was clearly opposed to this movement as he is in fact opposed to every effort on the part of anybody to create differences in religious faiths that all faiths lead to the same goal is a most beautiful and convincing truth at the close of this discussion the friend exceeded the limits of decent talk however ramdas was cool and collected by the grace of ram at parting ramdas assured the friend that he loved him most dearly in spite of any objectionable words used by him. if i if i me and mine is there you know we we will get offended we can say insulted just like you have got freedom to have your own opinion i have got my own freedom to opinion all those things will come the papa calls him and said he loved him most dearly in spite of any objection then what happened later next day about the same time this friend came again in a great hurry he could scarcely talk he could only whisper his throat was choked up his condition was pitiable oh maharaj he claimed to falling at the feet of ramda god has punished your slave slave for having used rough words yesterday see how my throat is choked i can't speak out to her immediately papa what he says oh friend ramda is really sorry to hear this but be assured god never punishes god is love and is always kind our own doubts are our enemies and create a lot of mischief the so called evil is of our own making at once pulling out ramdas's right hand the friend rubbed the palm on his throat and strange to say his throat cleared he began to talk more clearly and in a few minutes he was all right behold maharaj how powerful you are he cried exultantly you missed it. again papa said you make a mistake dear friend Ramdas is a poor slave of Ram, possessing no powers at all. Your faith alone has cured you, and nothing else. From this time onward, the friend became very much attached to him, and was very kind. Oh Ram, thy ways are so wonderful that Ramdas gets utterly bewildered at times. The me is totally absent. You know. <coughs> A retired railway officer 
Bengal and Tilakatnam. He started in 2010, one day when he was trying his best to maneuver his fear car on the road near his home, which was full of potholes. A careful and considerate as he was to the pedestrians, he could not help splashing muddy water from one of the potholes onto the neatly starched uniform of a little girl and her mother on the way to school. He deeply regretted his mistake and immediately got off the car to express his apology. He did not rest easy after this incident and immediately took steps to repair the entire road starting from his home. He has spent the last 15 years of his life filling 1,125 potholes in Hyderabad using his own pension money. So not only that, he, he faced himself. What, whatever is possible to, so that this will not occur. Again, you know, you, one will be instrumental in offending others. This will happen every time. So what can be done? Instead of simply telling sorry, when you mean it, you know, absence of otherness comes in a subtle form. So whatever is possible, God gave him the thought. God gave him the convention. He really made it. A 75-year-old retired vice chancellor of Lucknow University, whose name you don't know, without seeking name and a fame, who had also taught at IIT Karakpur for 30 years. Our uh, Rajagopal. Our Rajagopal is an IIT Karakpur product. Our Nekandamama uh, Sanilam, he was the professor there, Vasanta's husband. Jaina, a predator organization. He was the vice chancellor. What did he do? Involves in manually cleaning bus stops and benches near his colony on alternate days. In spite of high position he held, he does not consider this as a menial job, but does it regularly? Some ways, you know, how the self-effacement comes. Ram Agarwal, a devotee from Mangalore who comes to Ashram, he shared this with us. Ram Agarwal from Mangalore, who was on a pilgrimage to North India, reached Vrindavan in peak summer. There he saw a middle-aged person serving pure water with joy to the thirsty pilgrims. Nowadays we don't know. Previously, whenever you travel to North India by train, they are talking about in the 70s, 80s. We all had the good fortune of witnessing this. In every station there will be a big matka. And matka water will be there. In the platform, they are allowed. And the moment we get one, everybody will be thirsting for water. So we all rush up, we go there, they give us joyous, loving, pure, cold, matka water. On those days, it's bottled water, and bottled water is not. Somebody may put some coin, and they may not receive it, put it in the matka itself. That's it. So here, this, this young man was personally serving. Seeing the man's loving and serving attitude, Agarwalji offered some money. That person politely declined to accept in spite of repeated requests from Agarwal. That evening, Agarwalji was taken to a hotel to have some cold drinks. He saw the same person who was serving water that morning, sitting in the cash table. He was also informed that this person was the owner. Agarwalji felt extremely humbled by the absence of ego of the hotel owner. Coupled with his humility and service, 
and immediately prostrated to him and sought forgiveness for having offered money that morning. <laughs> Two things here, no? One is that person, that young man, he could have easily employed, you know. When he is managing a, running a hotel, he can easily manage to employ people to do that. But no. He wanted to make use of that opportunity to face himself, to become one with everybody, to joyously serve others, and not for anything else. And the Ram Gopalji, Ram Ajavarji, just imagine how innocent and pure he is. As soon as he came to know that he is the man, he went and prostrated. I shouldn't have offered. Another, which Puja Swamiji shared with us about Swami Atmananda and Trishu, our Sudhar Mama's father. Swami Atmananda was well respected for his exemplary qualities. Whenever there was an occasion to raise public funds, the organizers used to request Swami to accompany them to do the well-to-do persons and the mill owners. One mill owner had strictly wanted the Swami not to bring such people to him. At the same time, the Swami will join friends for fundraising and go to the, would go to the same mill owner who shouted the Swami and reminded him about the strictures of not bringing anybody to him. Swami calmly and quietly replied that what he said was true, but when their friends passed him to accompany them, he joined because of the noble cause they have initiated. Again, the mill owner will shower words of abuse. The Swami cheerfully accepted, would not get offended. He could do so because he could see that both are right and his right and wrong was not there. He was not, no, he was placing himself in the mill owner. Yeah, so many people come every day morning. So he has warned him, he should not go. He is right. But the people who are raising the funds, they say, no, no, you should come. They are also right. So, so long as we don't bring in our rights and wrongs, there is no conflict. We accept the rights and wrongs of others. So how the self-effacement can come out? Beautifully brought out by Swami. These are all wonderful lessons for us. Actualizing the, the idea. One man verbally abused Lord Buddha and went on abusing him for a long time. Buddha was accompanied by his dear disciple Anand. Anand could not tolerate this disrespect shown to his master. In a fit of anger he told Buddha, this man is behaving very badly. If we allow, I will set him right in no time. Buddha laughed and said, He is doing something wrong. And you are punishing yourself for his wrong. By burning with anger. When anger is directed towards a person, the impact on the person will depend on the level of his or consciousness. But it most certainly does affect adversely the mind mind and body of the person who is angry. Anger is undoubtedly a type of self-punishment. Anyhow, they see what he said was, you know, you don't do that, you don't accept. Watch and wait. Buddha was travelling on a hilly terrain. His most worthy disciple Anand was with him, with him in, on his journey. On the way, Buddha was feeling thirsty and he asked Anand to bring water from the nearby lake. When Anand dipped his pitcher into the lake, he found that the water was muddy. He tried to clear the water, but the more he tried, the more muddy it became. He tried his best, but could not collect the clean water. So unsuccessful, he came back without water and told Buddha that the water was not drinkable. Buddha told him, don't try to clear the water. Just sit on the bank of the lake and wait. Anand did as he was told. In no time, the mud settled down by itself and the water became clear. Anand collected the water, brought it back to Buddha. Don't fight with the voices of your mind like lust, anger, me and mine. Watch them disinterestedly without identifying words and with them. By doing so, all the modifications and impurities of your mind 
will eventually settle down and disappear. So men, though we may be hearing all these things, it, it doesn't mean that the me and mine will disappear. But when it comes, now here Buddha gives us a clue. Watch it. At the moment the watching starts, he assures us, it will sit, it will sit down and everything will disappear. This is the story of two brothers who lived side by side in their own farm for many years until one day a foolish argument caused a rift between them. This was the first serious disagreement the brothers had in all of their 50 years. Up until that day, they always worked their fields together, shared knowledge and produce and lent a helping hand to one another in times of need. The fight began over a small misunderstanding, which can sometimes happen, but the dispute dragged on and became an angry exchange of words, followed by weeks of silence. One day there was a, a, a knock on the old brother's door. When he opened it, he was facing an old, weird carpenter holding a toolbox. I could sure use some work, sir, said the stranger. Do you need any repair on your farm? Yes, replied his brother. I have got a job for you. Across the creek there is a farm that happens to belong to my younger brother. Until recently, the whole area between our homes was green, but then he changed the path, making it into the border between us. I am sure he did that for spite, but I will show him. You see those trees, you know? I want you to turn them into a ten foot tall fence. I never want to see his face again. The old carpenter thought quietly to himself for a few minutes and eventually said, I see. The farmer helped the carpentry carpenter carry his tools and the wood and then drove off to the city on some errands. When he came back in the evening, the old carpenter had finished. Upon arriving at the place, Krieger, the older brother was stunned. His eyes were bulging out. He could not utter a single word. Where a fence should have been standing, a bridge in our stood. A quaint and special bridge, truly a work of art, with an intricately carved bench. At the same time, the younger brother happened to come to the same spot. He rushed over the bridge, embraced his old brother and said, You are something special. Building a bridge after all, I have, after all I have said and done, you are building a bridge. While both brothers were hugging, the old carpenter collected his tools, started walking away. The brothers turned him and said, Please stay for a few more days. We have more things that need fixing. I would allow to stay kids, kind, but I have many more bridges to build and things to fix in other places. The moral of our story is simple. We often let anger push away from our loved ones and allow pride to come before our love. Don't let it happen to you. Learn to forgive and appreciate what you have. So different facets of the me and mine. No? Narmamattam and Nirahankar. Both of them, both the brothers are basically, intrinsically pure. Something was there on the surface level, it has become huge. But the carpenter, no? a highly evolved soul, he had the guts to not to discuss, but he did it. The moment he did it, no, he touched and kindled the goodness. The Nirahankar aspect, Nirmamattva aspect, which could have been the source for the surface level conflict. And he required. We have seen Charlie Chaplin, the great humorist on the screen, up and down are saying, the same, that. On the screen he makes us laugh, but he, when he returns home he cries in anguish. Gandhiji went to see Charlie Chaplin in a small house in a slum district of London. After their meeting was over, he asked Charlie Chaplin, would you like to see the demonstration of our prayers? 
there is no room for you gandhi ji said you sit you sit on the sofa we will sit on the floor said he and he offered the prayer charlie chaplin wrote the leg character gandhi and his men did not feel embarrassed to sit on the floor in front of me but i literally felt embarrassed to sit on the sofa and look down upon gandhi and his colleagues go so up and down and say when the me and mine is not there so these are some of the anecdotes which uh, papa started parading before us to make us know that it is not a utopian dream not an impractical dogma not a mere theory but it is practical it is it is it is feasible anybody any devotee any aspirant can after a lot of reflecting over the need to practice this can slowly try to actualize this when god places him on different tests and experimentations so sorry we have taken five more minutes so we have covered now adveshta maitri karuna nirmamattam nira whether we should go ahead with that we will discuss tomorrow there are so many like this probably with one or two anecdotes we will just to know because this is enough this is more than enough 